Hey, I'm going to be installing Pterodactyl Panel and I'm going to be showing you how to do it. I'm going to start my virtual machine and I'm going to point it to the Ubuntu 1804 ISO. If you're using a VPS, just make sure you install Ubuntu 1804 LTS. You don't have to do the LTS, it's completely up to you. There's some prerequisites to this installation. You're going to need an SMTP server. I'm just going to use the Google one, so you use a Google account to set it up with. And you're also going to want to have a domain or in a subdomain set to that. It's up to you whether you want to use one or not. There's a couple of free domains out there you can probably get a hold of. I don't trust them though. Domains are quite cheap at about $10 a year. So I suggest you get one of those. If you're doing this from a local computer like I am, you're going to want to port forward. And if you are going to be hosting a Minecraft server off it, I strongly suggest that you run it through an external proxy like Cloudflare so no one can get your public IP address. I'm going to set my stuff to Australia. Most of these are just the default settings to install Ubuntu. And if you would like to skip this, just go ahead and check down down in the description and at the top of the description there is a timestamp about where the actual installation starts that's only if you don't like hearing my beautiful voice I'm gonna set my subnet if you want to know what your subnet is you can get a subnet calculator most of the time you take your router address you minus one from the last digit and you add a slash 24 so for example if your router was 192.168.0.1 then you want to get a .0.0, .0 but the subnet calculators out there and sometimes it's a much different. You want to put the network address at the top rather than a host address. I'm going to set my gateway to 10.0.0.1. My name service to 1.1.1.1. You don't have to follow what I'm doing down here. This is just my preference, what I tend to set things up with. If you'd like to find as well your IP address details, your subnet, your main network, as well as your gateway, just do IP config within Windows or IP space A within Linux. Once these settings are done, you just hit done. I don't have a proxy and I really think that you don't have a proxy either. Since I'm in Australia, I'm going to set my mirrors to AU, but you can leave this alone. This just makes the install a little bit faster. Most of the time it's just pressing enter, go continue, add your username. I'm just going to set my password as password1. I suggest that you don't do this, but this is just for demonstrational purposes. And it is installing. I'll see you in a little bit. Enjoy the time lapse. So once the installation's complete, just restart it like this, then just start up from the normal hard drive. Now, if you want to view my GitHub, just go to user Mr. Flacco, check out my scripts and you'll see the pterodactyl installation here. This is the script, it's pretty simple. It uses two other scripts made by this person here to install Pterodactyl and it works really solidly and I've tested it a lot. And then it just has a little bit of post installation as well as setting up the SSL. You want to get this link here and you want to copy that command into your Ubuntu once it gets started. Make sure Ubuntu has internet access. You want to go a sudo su to start with just to have root access. Then you just simply do the command. So it's the first line, it's also going to be in the description to do it, just make sure I'm getting it right, and then you press enter, and then it's done. Now, before we get started, you're gonna wanna make sure, so your, you have your FQDN, so your domain pointed at your public IP address, or um, you have a domain linked to your VPS, and you're gonna wanna make sure that these ports are forwarded, except for this one, you don't really need this one, I kinda just have it as a secondary Minecraft server. But you gotta make sure that you got your 25565 for your server, you got your 443 for your SSL, you got your 80 for your HTTP, you got your 2022 for your, for your SSH into your Docker, and then you got your 8080 for your node. You're gonna make sure all of those are forwarded before you get started. So once you have your domain set up, you just chuck it in here, that's my domain, you press enter, and then it just gets started. Now this part here is gonna take quite a while to do, so I suggest maybe if you're feeling like it have a bit of a break chuck on a YouTube video I suggest watching my multi-craft installation while you're waiting and then once it's done I'll meet you back I'm gonna be fast forwarding it so you can maze well I'm gonna be fast forwarding this so you can enjoy the time lapse if you want but it will take a while for this part to finish depending on how powerful your server is and how good your internet is myself I'm gonna be chucking on a YouTube video while this gets started if you want to know what YouTube video it is Make sure you subscribe. I'm not going to tell you, just subscribe. Also, if you're using SSH to get this started, you don't have to worry too much. There's a specific rule when I enable the firewall that allows SSH through, so you don't have to worry about getting disconnected. Though if you're using a port that's other than 22 for SSH, I suggest you change the script, change the number 22 in the script for the number whatever port you're using for SSH if you don't want to get kicked out of your server.
So after a few minutes and a few beautiful videos of mine that I was watching, the bulk upgrade has finished and now we're up to the setup stage. You want to type in number one for NGINX. You want to set your database name. I just leave it as default. Your username, password. It's going to get password one. The FQDN, which is your domain that you've set for this, pt.flaco.net for me. It's going to be different for you, obviously, because this is my domain and you're not allowed to touch it. You want to type yes for SSL. And you want to type Y for continue with the installation. It's going to go through and run all its little setup things to get this working. And then I'll come back in a few minutes, maybe chuck on another one of my YouTube videos. And once you get to this stage, chuck in a password for your MySQL. I suggest you use the same password you've been using for a while. My password is the very, very secure one, password one with a capital P. Now this is where you enter the email address that you have created just for this purpose, which my one is plexus random testing at gmail.com. This is very important, this part here, a lot of people screw up here. You want to type in your application URL as HTTP S colon slash slash your FQDN or fully qualified domain name. Mine is pt.flaco.net. Chuck enter. Give it a time zone. Mine is Australia slash Sydney. Press enter here. Press enter here. Press enter here. Type in yes here. Press enter here. Press enter here. Press enter here. Press enter here. Type in your password. Press enter here. This is where you enter in the host. I'm using Gmail, so I go smtp.gmail.com. SMTP port for Google is 465. You put your username as your Gmail account. So I'll set my Gmail as Plexus Random Testing at gmail.com. Press enter, chuck in your password. Set your emails to originate from the same email address that you put before. Press enter here. Set this to SSL and then type a yes for this last step. So this is where you create your pterodactyl account. You want to make it an administrator, you want to give it an email address. This is where you can give it your personal email address, but I'm just going to give it the same one. This is where you want to give it a username, so I'm just going to give it admin, and I'm going to give it a first name, which is admin, and a last name, which is admin, and a password. I'm just going to give it a password1, and it's going to continue with the installation. For this part, just type Y, and press enter. This is where it's setting up the daemon. At this point here, you just want to press enter and then wait a little bit longer. So at this section here, this is when you're creating the SSL certificate to use for HTTPS. Type the number one. Make sure you have your ports forwarded before you do this stage, otherwise it won't work. Type in the email address that you have assigned, or you can type in your personal email address, it's up to you. Now, at this point, you want to type A. Usually you would type no for this section, but you need to type yes or press Y to get this to work, which is a bit bad, but you know, you got to do what you got to do to get your SSL certificate, unless you want to buy one yourself. Now, it has finished. Your pterodactyl is installed. Now it's just time to set it up. You want to go to cd slash srv slash daemon. And then you want to head to your web panel. To access the web panel, you just got to go to pt. Dot your, or you, you got to go to your domain, whatever you set up. You want to log in with that account you created before. Now at this section, you want to go to your settings part. You want to go to your location. You want to create a location. Give it some sort of description. Go to your nodes, create a new node, give your node a name, give your node a description, give it your FQDN, assign it some memory, put the over allocation to negative one, give it your total disk space, it's up to you what you set it to, give the percentage to negative one. Well, this will just create more um, if you use up more than memory. If you give it zero, it will prevent it from going over the memory. Create that node, go to your configuration, copy the configuration here, open up a lovely website like hastebin.com, chuck your configuration in there, save it, and then make sure you go to the raw link for that, so you just have the plain text. This doesn't work with pastebin, don't use it. Pastebin has a weird invisible character at the end. So what you want to do is you want to type in the command, this is the link I'm going to be using, so you want to type the command curl https colon slash slash hastebin.com slash raw slash whatever the link it gave you and you want to put that into your configuration slash core.json and once that's done 
you can notice that it hasn't got a connection here. You want to type in the command npm start. And this is how you start your pterodactyl server or the daemon. And the daemon is now started. It's connected. As you can see here, oh, it says error connecting, but if I refresh it, it seems to be working. You go to create a server. You give your server a name. You assign it the owner as whatever the account is that you made before. You give it a description. Put the allocation as your some sort of description, the node one here. Oh, actually, you want to go to your nodes first. You go to your nodes and you go to allocations. You give it an IP address, so I don't know. 0 to 0 to 0 to 0 IP alias you give it a name so server and you give it a port 25565 you go back to your main node setting oh sorry the main server setting I'm going to give it a capital S give it a gigabyte of RAM uh, give it a gigabyte of disk space and you can give it a 100% CPU limit if you have multiple cores give it uh, like 200% for two cores or 300% for three cores for this I'm just going to be using a simple paper egg to get it working. All this does is have the jar and sets it up all based on those settings. And I'm going to use the latest version and let's see if this works. It didn't work because it didn't update the allocation but I'm just going to add the information back here. And then I go create and the server is made, it's installing. Once it's finished installing, it also pops up here that it's installing and it also sends an email that the server's installing. So after a few minutes it is finished installing, I'll click on the server and I'll click on start. And hopefully if we did this correctly. Oh, that had me a bit worried. First time I clicked on it, it failed. But the second time I clicked on it, it looks like it worked completely fine. And as you can also see in the log here, it's some weird, weird error that it ran into. I'm not sure why it did. If you run into that, don't panic. It just worked when I started it again. Now, after a couple of minutes, the server is finished. I'm going to start up my Minecraft. And I'm going to join to pt.flaco.net. You see, server's working completely nicely. If I type something in chat, you can see right here, it's working. So that is the pterodactyl node done. Now you do a simple reboot on the server, and uh, you don't have to do anything after that restart happens. It starts up a service that does this, so you can restart the server whenever you want, and the server starts like normal. Well, I hope this has been an informative video for you, and I've hope, I hope that you've thoroughly enjoyed it, and you show this to your grandmother, your sister, and even your dog about how to set up Pterodactyl, because everyone should know how to. If you liked it and it's helped you, really like it if you subscribed, but you don't have to. It is 100% up to you whether you click that subscribe button, but it's extremely tempting looking at it now, and it will only take you a couple of seconds. If you'd like me to make another type of video on this, or some other weird thing that you decide to use instead of this, then maybe I'll, I'll get around to doing that. Just chuck it down in the comments, I always read the comments. So, again, if there's any other information that you want to know about these sort of things, chuck a comment down in the describbles, and I'll make sure I check it out. Have a good day.